Greetings. Welcome back to the Lava and Garden Show. Ah, volcano is pretty much just continuing to continue. Uh, there's not a lot of change. Um, quite a few uh, five-point earthquakes up in the park here at the Hele Mau Mau Caldera. That's mostly because it continues to collapse. Uh, I felt one of them yesterday. Uh, it was a, it must have been a pretty good one. I was laying on the bed watching a video when all of a sudden the bed started dancing forward across the floor. And I was getting ready to split and go outside, but it stopped almost immediately. I was worried it was going to be another one of those 6.9s that set the earth rolling, but just another steam and ash shotgun blast out of the cold air up there. Things slumping in and slumping in. It looks like uh, uh, the museum is going to be a complete loss. Uh, the observation area, again, probably complete loss. All the ground underneath is cracking because of this. It just won't be able to be in the same place that it used to be when this is all over. Um, most of us are really hoping it will be over pretty soon, at least up in the park. Uh, so they get the park back open. That's That has been a really big hit here. I mean, we've lost, you know, nearly 700 homes. Uh, a lot of them were vacation rentals, and uh, that's affected things a lot. But it's a double whammy because it burned up all the homes down in the southeast, but it killed the National Park. The National Park was the big draw. That is what brought people to this island. Uh, number one tourist destination in all of Hawaii, Volcanoes National Park. So, uh, things have really gotten dead around here. Um, a few things that are new, though, and I know our mayor here, Harry Kim, uh, mayor of the Big Island, he had said that he wanted to try to prohibit people from rebuilding in Lava Zones 1 and 2, uh, where they got burned out, and he was talking about a land exchange. And as far as I know, the land exchange is still a, a viable idea, where the county or the state will give people parcels in a safer zone in exchange for the ones they lost. Uh, I think that's a super idea, but Harry also wanted to stop him from going back in there and doing any more rebuilding of the homes that were lost. And it doesn't look like he's got the legal rights to be able to do that. If they were going to try to stop people from going back there, they'd really have to rewrite the laws. Of course, they're lawmakers, and maybe they can figure that one out too. But you know, right now, it looks like the laws are in Harry's way. Um, it's a... You know, kind of a thing about living in a capitalistic type of society, real estate in particular. You know, that's a that's a tough one to control. You know, land. It's really it's so vital, so close to the heart. You know, it's like everybody needs a piece of ground to live on. You don't mess with it. Uh, and there's a lot of validity to that. Uh, another note on the uh, volcano, and this is a repetition because I've said it before, but I am uh, thumping my chest that I got it. Uh, using my own weather station here on the farm and then comparing it to reports coming from southeastern Pune uh, weeks ago, I had determined that the volcanoes were actually seeding the clouds. Now, seeding's probably not quite the right word. Uh, lately, the uh, meteorologists are referring to the heat that's rising, that's causing uh, uh, high amounts of rainfall. How's it dropping the rain? Uh, over Leilani Estates down here because of that heat, I had originally thought that it might be the particulates in the air and it was causing the moisture to condense. There would be some of that too. Who knows what it's all about. It's actually a, a relatively new phenomenon from my point of view. But uh, it appears now that all the local meteorologists are on page with it. Um, I, they probably weren't watching my channel when they got the idea, but I was there first with that idea because I was just seeing only a small fraction of the rainfall here in Mountain View that we ordinarily would get, and it wasn't coming. But yet they were getting torrential rains down there. This morning I got up, we had had zero rainfall um, in the last 24 hours. All right, and Almost nothing in 24 and absolutely nothing in the last 12. Yet, at the same time, over Leilani Estates this morning, they were having flash flood warnings. And you could see it from the house, looking down there, as huge gray clouds with rain streaming out of them. Uh, the heat or the particulates or whatever are changing the weather, and they're changing it 
you know, over a relatively small area, the district of Pune, but they're changing it dramatically because that region used to be drier than where I live. Now it is so much wetter than where I live, it isn't funny. And so, yeah, if any of these naysayers about climate change and stuff, get over it because I'm telling you, all we had to do was heat up the air down there and throw a little bit of junk in the atmosphere. The entire rainfall pattern on this corner of the Big Island has now changed because of it. Uh, I imagine it will eventually revert and go back, but uh, with all the burning that we do and all the particulates, anybody who thinks that doesn't affect weather on this planet is loopy. Uh, because we got a little microcosm right down here watching it happen. I think fossil fuel, it's a volcano, but frankly it amounts to about the same thing. It produces the same gases as coal, you know, sulfur dioxide. Uh, it produces heat like any kind of burning. Uh, it's a heck of a lot of heat, but still, it's a nice little micro model down there. So see what happens when you start to burn stuff, heat the air up, and throw junk in the air. Wow, it changed the weather completely. Completely here. <laughs> it's free. Out in the garden, well, it's been, frankly, a little bit disgusting. Um, I spent a lot of money on fencing here, and the little, some sow here had a, a litter of little wieners, and all little son of a guns were so small they managed to get underneath my gates. My gates were set high on the driveway because I had intended to bring in more gravel in places and I didn't want to reset the gates to do it. Uh, I thought they were, you know, close enough to the ground to keep pigs out, but they're apparently not close enough to keep wieners like this. They got into my dragon fruit last night. They tore that all up. Um, I've spent the whole morning out here running barbed wire all over the place. I've barbed the undersides of my gates, which is ridiculous, but I have. Um, one of the gates I've temporarily abandoned and just barbed underneath it and put lava rocks to try to stop all this. Uh, it's very frustrating. Yes, I'm tired of it. I'm not putting it in. Otherwise, uh, I ran the uh, Green Garden Guy uh, plant sale here a while back, and I got quite a bit of response from it. But as soon as I pulled the ad off the web, that was the end of that. It's been dead. I haven't seen a soul come in here trying to buy anything in over two weeks now. And so, I think I'll just walk the nursery tables and say, hey, does anybody need any chocolate sapote? They look pretty. Um, I've got thornless blackberries. They look great. Oh, look at the basil. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Over here I got Kona coffee. Um, achachas, the uh, Garcinia humilis, they look really sweet. Uh, papayas, non-GMO, loquats, that delicious stubby ice cream bean. Um, next to it there's abius and macadamia nuts and chico sapote. Uh, Roselle, nice Roselle. Malabar chestnuts. Uh, Grumichamas. Um, Lots of, uh, so many Suriname cherries. Beautiful Suriname cherries. I have flats and flats of those. Great for hedges. Make you a deal on Suriname cherries. Um, over here we got some Rolinias that look pretty good. Uh, passion fruit vines. Sour sops. Anybody need sour sops? I got about five flats of those. It's warming up and so the cacao is starting to flush out with new leaves looking very nice. Uh, we have allspice trees this week. That's new. Pigeon peas. Anybody need beautiful pigeon peas? Lemongrass. Frankie's red dragon fruits. Um, Desert King dragon fruits. I only got one of them out here, but I got a whole bunch of these Hawaiian cocktail peppers. That's a winner. Uh, I've got both red and yellow rambutan seedlings here. Uh, dwarf Katera coffee. Guarded by anoles. Ground orchids, graptophyllums in two colors. Uh, there's a few little koa trees and agave left here. I got some kapoho sweet dragon fruits. We got the Hawaiian chili pepper. I got bucarias, achachas, more graptophyllums. Beautiful big grillinias. 
Oh, great big nice one gallon Rilinias. Uh, Costa Rican dragon fruits. Orange dragon fruits. Rainproof mangoes. Rainproof mangoes from Indonesia. Get them while they last. They're up big enough. Kona coffees. Nice big one gallon Kona coffees. Oh, big sour sops. Um, patchouli in masses. Large cacao over there. Triple crown, the thornless blackberry. I got a few vanilla orchid left yet. Natchez, the thornless blackberry. Yellow dragon fruits. Sweet potato plants. Beauties. Parsley. More Keturah coffee. Avocados for grafting. I've got a rare var variety of guava from Brazil. Uh, Campomanesia guzmanifolia. Try to say that one fast three times. I've got seedless jaboticabas from Florida. We've got the uh, um, inflata. That's the uh, very, very large yellow jaboticaba. We got the peach jaboticabas over here. I got meringue. You name it. You name it. We got it. Come on down. There's even more than that. I'm tired of listing it. So, if there's anybody out there saw anything interesting, you might want to get a hold of me because sales have been slow. i got to get rid of this stuff. Give me a call. Come on. Um, I'll even ship it to the mainland uh, to uh, 46 states. I can't ship to California, Arizona, Texas, or Louisiana. But any of the rest of you, if you want to make an order of $100 worth of plants, uh, plus the shipping and the tax, I'll be glad to wrap them up and send them to you. So aloha, happy gardening, and you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.